Folks, I wanted to show you our brand new product for 2016. This is a the very first reusable cattle guard form. And uh, kids are walking it around. Boys, can you kind of turn it sideways so the people can see you inside? There you go. I'll come up to it there. So the concrete will go inside here. And we've got spacers for the rebar. All right, boys, what do you say? Does it, does it, it's a little heavy, but not that bad, right? Yeah. Uh, Daniel, go stand in the middle so you can see about how what size it is. There we go, next to a little puppy. One of you boys put your hands down there so we can see how deep it is. Yep, that's where the concrete beams are. And uh, these areas will be the gap. This is poured upside down, so once it's poured and hardened, you flip it over and you got a cattle guard. Reusable, and um, it's made by cattleguardforms.com. I would use some silicone oil. Some people use diesel, whatever you got. And then I would spray it real good. Okay and set it down on a level surface. It's fairly level here. And you can do this in your barn. It could be on concrete, wherever you want. So you see I'm spraying right here. That, that'll make it a lot easier to release. All right, you're gonna need three bars of steel about 71 inches long. Basically just gonna lay them in here. And we'll have some steel shots showing these also. And then we'll take these, just lay them in. And if you'll notice, right here, there's a little groove. So that way you know you're at the right spot for the rebar. Now we're going for the top level. You can see I already made a little tray. There's three bars, you line them up. Line them up with the other ones. Now, we'll have on your model that you buy, uh, we'll have spacers here already set with grooves here. Now these bars have a little, a little space here, it's okay. The bottom ones, I wanted to make sure you're at the right depth. We're using an 80 pound bag, 4,000 PSI. Okay, folks, so what we're doing now, we're mixing up some concrete. Daniel here is uh, one of our head guys here. He's used to the cattle guard forms. And we're doing two bags at a time. One thing I wanted to bring to your attention, when you're pouring concrete in this product, I don't want you to just pour one end and then this end and this end. What I want you to do is pour concrete gradual in each trough, keeping it the same level as you come up. That way you're distributing the weight of the concrete evenly. Okay, so right now we're taking some mud and just putting it under the rebar there, making sure that it's under it, which it is. That's good. And we're just gonna fill it up. Here we got another helper, all right. Okay, so now Tyler is going to tap it. See how he's just kind of lightly tapping it? Okay, uh, my brother's gonna stick a bolt in. You can see we stuck one there, and later we'll be able to put a chain down and pick it up. So it's all filled with concrete. Go ahead, brother, just kind of stick it in there. And there's a bar of steel right there. He's just gonna put it right beside it. That's good. And he's going to let it sit just like that. Good. All right, so uh, brother's just tapping. A little harder, brother. He's tapping some beams. That's those little beams that you saw in there. Part of the film, you'll see my brother with a two-by-four going like this. Well, what he's doing, he's hammering on this ridge right here and this ridge. Remember the rebar is here, here, and here, so he's not hitting it. And what he's doing is tapping it, and that keeps everything, all the concrete vibrated, and that's why it's so smooth uh, on the product. What that'll do, it'll take air bubbles out. Go ahead and go to the middle. 
right there, right on top of that beam. It's that little plastic part that was sticking up. Tap a little harder. There you go. Now go to the end, probably about right here. And so what we're doing, all we're doing is uh, taking the air bubbles out. And that way when we take the form off, that beam will be nice and smooth. And you got another one going down here, so we'll do the same thing there. And that's about it. We're going to let it get hard and come back and take the form off. Okay, so what we have here is uh, just a plain uh, front end loader. Uh, we put the chain here. Wrap the chain around like this. Put the chain here. So now we should be able to lift it up. Got it up, and we'll hold it right there. Oh yeah. Now once it starts to give, Making it equal. A little bit here, a little bit there, coming right off. Don't worry about these little pieces like that. That's where that spray we put down, that oil. Okay, so now we're going to flip it over. You'll probably have a bucket to do it, but whatever you got just to flip it over. Beautiful cattle guard right there. Smooth. Look how round this part is. How's that? Beautiful cattle guard. It uh, came out very smooth, round, very smooth, very nice. And you can just later take your tractor and uh, pick these up. What you want to do, you can either dig down and set them in the ground or uh, if you're going to do that make sure that you keep them elevated above the ground level at least four inches and then just slope your fill that you have around it but if you want to leave them on top of the ground you know make sure it's a level surface put them all together and then take your fill take some fill gravel or dirt and then slope it away so almost could be used like a speed bump also if you got a lot of traffic coming in fast that'll slow it down but you can either put them on the ground or you can recess them into the soil and I would dig down about eight inches because these are a 12 inch product 
and that way it'll stick up about four inches. The reason you want to stick up at least four inches or you want to make sure it's elevated above the surrounding area is because every time it rains you don't want water coming and bringing debris inside. Um, what little bit of de debris you do get you can easily get it out. You got you a cattle guard. Now this is going to last forever maintenance free. Um, it has its built-in foundation. That thick area at the bottom has all got rebar in and engineered out to HS20. So as long as you keep that rebar where we tell you to keep it, uh, and you pour it with 4,000 pound concrete, uh, and your vehicle tires, if you think about it, here's a six footer, and then you'll have another six footer. So the tires are gonna be right in the middle of your big giant trucks to hold that HS20. So you wanna keep all the tires in the very center and then when the next one's poured, the center. So if you had a 12 foot opening, those tires are gonna end up right on the middle of that, which is gonna give it all the strength that you need for an HS20. Same way here. Of course, if you drive on the very tips of them, uh, you know, that that's a different rating. But according to the engineer, keep your tires in the center. So this is a six foot product. Put another six footer here. Keep, And then when you drive in, it drives right in the center. You've got an HS20. maintenance free you see these little uh, gaps here they're afraid to go down there and if they get their hooves in here there's a two inch hoof stop at the bottom they will pull their foot out rather than you know with the pit ones they're real deep and they go down to their belly and they break their legs where here they can get a little caught and then they come back out